Alter. Guys, this is probably gonna be the last time that we are going to do a video about the Zayun Crane M2. The reason why I have to do this part three is because I've been reading some of your comments in the last videos and you guys are basically saying that this 16 millimeter Sigma shouldn't really balance on the Crane M2. Um, but as you watch the last video, you can tell that I balanced it and it worked great. So it kind of puzzled me a little bit. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm not gonna use my Crane M2. Maybe it's just a defective device that actually worked. So I'm gonna throw this out. I have a friend that actually bought a new Crane M2. We're gonna use this baby. I'm gonna balance it on this and see if it worked. Ready? Let's do it. All right guys, so this time I'm not gonna fast forward my uh, balancing. I'm gonna actually balance it right in front of you and actually talk you through what I'm doing so that you can kind of see it. Because in my last video, I kind of fast forward it. Uh, so this time I'm gonna balance it and I'm probably gonna call this video balancing the Zayun Crane M2 actually. Now, now that I think about it, I may name that video that, okay? So this is a, again, this is a brand new one that's in the box. Um, this is mine right here. I'm gonna go ahead and let's take this out and balance it. You know, um, reading the comments, it, it's really interesting to me because maybe it's, it's just the one that, the piece that I have that uh, the motor is different or something. But it looks like some of you, um, it doesn't work. So I really want it to, I, want, I really wanted this to work for all of us. So let's go ahead and balance this baby. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna move this piece all the way back. Make sure I unlock everything. Okay, so first um, you notice I took my lens cap off. When, whenever you balance a gimbal, you, you have to take your lens cap off and tilt your screen however you want. But I already know that this gimbal is not gonna fit the screen pulling out so I'm gonna put it right there my own uh, the other difference uh, on my camera is I don't use the little eyepiece just cuz I use it on gimbal a lot so I pretty much I, I take it out and toss it out that should be the only difference between my camera setup and yours um, but yeah that's uh, that's it take the lens cap off and let's drop this thing in here lock that up secure it okay all right so right now it's definitely really lop lopsided there. Let's go ahead and unlock this piece here. And unlock this here. And then let's move that all the way over so I can get more room here. So the left and right axis, I just want to make sure that it's not super off balance. So right now, as you can see, this is like going all the way down here like this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock this and push the camera up a bit more. All right. And so as you can see, it's, it's lopsided over here. So I need to push over more, give it more room. You know, I hope this works. This is the first time we ever done it on this gimbal. Uh, so this whole video might be a whole a fail. Uh, this is the first time we've ever used it on this gimbal, okay? I actually hope it works because I'm sitting out here in like 110 degree doing this. So it's not leaning back and forth anymore, but it is up and down. 
And I'm gonna do some minor adjustment here and push the camera up more. Oh, now it's too much. Now I'm gonna push back more. Life of a gimbal user. Minor adjustment. Nope, going down. Up and down is good now. But whenever you tighten up the screw, it tend to make the gimbal lean one side or the other. So the one thing about this, uh, this setup is that this screw right here, even though it's tight, you can still move the camera this way or this way. You see that? So what that does is that it does get the entire thing off balance. So I need to make sure that um, it is straight. I'm playing around with these two axes right now, um, but there is one more axis that needs to be worked on as soon as I'm done with, with this. All right, so now that when I let go of the gimbal, it's standing still. <laughs> All right, so, if I tilt it like that, it stays. If I tilt it like that, it kind of stay. Yeah. So you see how when I tilt it like this, it goes up. When I tilt it like this, it kind of go down. It's because of this uh, part right here. So now what I need to do is adjust this part. Some people might do it differently where they adjust this part first, but uh, for some reason, I like to adjust this part last. There you go. So that's there. If I tilt it sideways, it should stay. If I should tilt it this sideways, it should kind of stay. So guys, the one thing to really remember on this one is that this knob right here doesn't really tighten this camera. So it tends to go this way or this way. So you gotta really adjust it or, or else it's gonna be off balance once more. You see that? That's, that's always the mistake that I'm making. So make sure that you really watch this piece right here. This is the piece that um, your, your camera can tilt that way or that way and it, it will get off balance. Right now I, I can see that it is off just a little bit because I'm measuring it top down. There's this bar right here I'm, uh, I, I just make sure that it's aligned with. Um, but it's, it's fairly good. Fairly good. I gotta do some minor adjustment on this one. Okay. So at this point, I don't want to waste any more time on this video. I'm just gonna call this balance because to be this is probably. I mean, you can spend another hour on this and try to really balance it out, but I think I'm gonna call this balance and let's see if it works. All right. Pray to the God that it works because on my other gimbal, it works just fine. We have not even turned on this gimbal, by the way. It just came in from Amazon. <laughs> you know, one, one thing I did forget is that this thing right here, this adjustment right here, see that? I pull it all the way out just because this is the maximum payload so I don't even think about that part but this uh, part of the gimbal is really for balancing this right here you see that if if it turns if you turn like this and it twists that way that means it's not balanced so yeah actually you know what I am I am going to uh, minor adjustment to this and by, by the way, you see how that's shooting up like that? It can probably get in the way of, of some things. You can actually pull this out and then twist it that way and it still won't mess with uh, the actual screws. So you, you can adjust that so that now it doesn't hit it anymore. All right? All right, so let's see. So that's still like spinning like crazy. So we're gonna... Twist it in a little more. That's really crazy. Let's pull it all the way out and again. Yeah, that's that's the max.
maximum that I can go. So really, I can't do any more than that. Okay, you know what? Just gonna turn it on. I'm gonna call this balanced. All right, guys, so we're gonna turn it on. Boom. Okay, so it's holding it. There's no air. I think we should uh, take this for a test spin, you think? Again, the reason why we're doing a test spin again is because this is a brand new gimbal. This is my old gimbal right here. New gimbal. You ready? Let's go. Okay guys, so like before, I'm gonna do a couple of things to this. If you've seen the uh, last video, we're pretty much going to PF mode, follow mode, uh, POV mode, vortex mode. We're gonna try to really work this gimbal out. Um, it is about 110 degree out here, it is super hot. So I'm expecting the motor to be pretty hot after this. So right now, it's not hot. I think uh, this watch is probably hotter than, than this gimbal right now. So here's the, here's it working. Okay. See that? All right. Work it. Uh, swap to POV v mode. Okay, so this is the real test for gimbal, by the way. If you can, if it can hold like this for more than 10 seconds, I guess, uh, I would say the motor is pretty darn strong. Hasn't, hasn't failed me yet. My arm is shaking now because I was working arm this morning. But uh, that's besides the point. As you can tell, it is doing it. Uh, actually, you know what? <laughs> Let me hit record. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm recording. So y'all can actually see like it. This is POV mode. All right. Okay, let's go run. First off, POV mode. Let's work this gimbal. I really don't think I should be doing this after lunch. But that already wore me out. Okay, next one. Let's do the important stuff. Vortex mode. So again, you tap that, turns into uh, PF mode, right? But you double tap, turns into the goal mode, double tap again. You should go into vortex mode. Vortex mode. Let's do it. Vortex mode.
my friend. There's vortex mode. Let's do the gimbal. Nope. It is not hot at all. Hmm. Okay, let's do some uh, regular shots with it shooting up in the sky so that it works the gimbal this way a lot more, okay? Um, let's see if it, if it fails, okay? So let's try it. You know, I really hate to redo a video that's pretty much has already been done, but again, this is a brand new gimbal. And I really wanted to show you guys that it's not just my gimbal that can handle this. This is one we just ordered off of Amazon. And it is working as intended. And so anyway, I guess that's a little quick demo that I want to show you guys. It's working, the 16 mil, A6500 on here. Uh, it's working just fine. The gimbal said that it can handle about 700 grams. This setup right here, uh, the lens plus the Sony A6500 is about 850 grams. Um, and so I would say it's working like a champ. It's not burning the, mo the motor at all. I'm out here in really hot, day and it's fine um, I'm able to do all the things that I'm doing without with, without it vibrating because if you've ever used a, a, a gimbal before you know when it doesn't like it at a certain point and it will tell you it will vibrate in your hands I'm not feeling that at all I really have to give Zaizun credit for this like I said in my last video it is um it's great that they can create something so small that's that's so powerful and I hope that this video helped you guys in your setup because to me this is a great setup this is the best wide angle on the market for the Sony APS-C system this is the best wide angle right now it goes down to f1.4 totally recommend this lens but a lot of time it's too heavy for a lot of things and so um, it's really hard to carry it around but I'm glad that it works on something like this because now you know you don't have to buy a bigger gimbal for it well I think I'm gonna end the video there I hope that proves that you can grab this gimbal off of Amazon uh, links down below the it worked right off of the bat this is actually our first time turning this thing on so I hope that helps you and if it does, make sure you hit the like button down there. And we're going to see you guys in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.